Hello there, welcome to another episode of Vinyl Dad. I just wanted to explain a little today about the Indigo Distortion, what it is, and why we're having it on some records. So I will start this one pretty easy by explaining that the Indigo Distortion comes mostly from the pressing, so to speak. If the pressing of the record is bad, you will get Indigo Distortion. So, um, most of the time, what is a bad pressing? Most of the new records that they are doing today, they are hurrying up the process, so to speak, which means that the pressing is not so good as it used to be. Um, also, they are trying to squeeze the groups together so they can get more and more information, so to speak, on the, on the, uh, on the record. And uh, this is also another problem. Uh, because the, when you start to drop the needle in the beginning of the record, uh, it will sound best in the beginning. And the longer, longer in you come to the center, the worse it will sound. And this is normal. It's not something that is bad. And it's not something that is, uh, is something strange. This has to do with that they are trying to uh, squeeze in so much information on this uh, vinyl and there is limitation to vinyl which means that long times ago when they are uh, recording music the vinyl sounded a lot better because they actually were made for analog today it can be like uh, you buy a new record and uh, they are not thinking about the pressing itself they are only thinking about putting it out so it's almost like you listen to a digital version on a vinyl and the limitation of this will be that uh, the record itself will sound digital and uh, the sound of the record will not sound as good as it will on digital because of the limitation we have on the on the vinyl. So if you take an old record and you will play that one today that was made for vinyl, so the big 70s and 80s like that, you will actually hear the big difference. Take example for for from for a record with uh, let's say uh, Pink Floyd and you take that one from the 70s the sound of that uh, record will be amazing and uh, if you compare it to the one today I'm sure it's going to sound very good but I promise you that the old one 100% will, will sound better uh, this is not the case with all kind of pressings you can also have new pressings that it's made from an analog recording long times ago and it will still sound very good. So what we can do to minimize this problem? Uh, minimize this problem you actually do by putting the songs in the beginning of the record that has, has most most intense sound like rock music like this. Um, you need to put those high volume songs in the beginning of the record and also end as the needle comes closer to the center, the, the record will spin faster and faster and faster. It's, and as the grooves also will get smaller, the needle has to work very, very hard and quick when this one is, is spinning. So you need to get a lot of information on a very, very small, small piece of vinyl, which can be the problem here. So that's why also if you're looking at all the records, you will actually see... And notice that they usually put those slow songs in the end of the record. That is just to uh, avoid this kind of problem. Another problem also is that um, today a record is uh, might be very long, like an hour or something. Some uh, artists, they are actually putting out these records, but they are putting them out on only in a single vinyl, which means that they are squeezing the grooves instead of... They should normally be like this. They are squeezing them like this so they can put more information on this uh, record. Which means that the needle has to work harder and uh, you will also have uh, a bad more sound closer you come into the center. And this is also called inner group distortion. The best way to do this, um, you can actually see on a record if it has been very very good uh, well made so to speak and that is if let's say a record is around uh, 
one hour long and it's in it is on a double album this is perfect because then you will maybe see like two three songs on one side of this record and you will also know also notice that uh, you will see that the needle will never come so far to the center it has a big uh, outro when the uh, when the all the three songs stop you will have a big space and like an outro there so uh, it will be uh, not coming so close to the center this has also to do with in this way they are preventing this from happening some artists today they are actually putting in a lot of job on this uh, and the artists like Daft Punk like that like Random Access Memories and all those kind of records they are a very good example of how a vinyl should be made and uh, how they are pressing the records some artists they are just uh, or they record comes in and just putting them out because they know vinyl will sell people will buy them they don't care about quality it's only a digital pressing because it's mostly recorded in digital today uh, so you will buy this record on uh, on a cd or a high res audio after when you have done that one and you also maybe listen to the vinyl you will not say oh no why the vinyl sounds so bad that is because they are doing like this they are only pressing it like this so it's like this that if you buy like all the records or newer records as well taken care of and have a thinking about the vinyl pressing your vinyl will sound good if it's not your vinyl will actually suck so what is it that we can learn from this yeah we can actually learn like this that some of the records today that you buy will actually sound better on CD on on high res or whatever digital format you are using. So the vinyl will sound worse. It does not mean that vinyl sucks in some way, but it does not. In some uh, pressing, they actually sound a lot better and than on the digital format, even the new records. So you have to choose the one that is sound good and sound bad. I will come back to this one later. Um, I show you some example of records that actually sound a lot better on vinyl compared to to um, the digital format. Um, okay, that was all for this time, and I hope that you understand what I mean here. And uh, and uh, oh yeah, one last thing is here also. So the last thing is that. To avoid this from happening with in a groove distortion is one last point that I almost forgot and that is stylus wear. And if you have a new stylus uh, you will you will actually have less of this problem. So in this case it has to do also with the, the stylus wear. And it does not mean that the in a groove distortion will go away so to speak. But if you notice this problem that you have a record and it does not have any inner groove distortion and you start to have inner groove distortion, that's actually the sign of that the stylus is worn out and you need actually to change it direct to avoid also to destroy the grooves on your record. Um, so it goes hand in hand, but that does not mean that the, in, the inner groove distortion will actually disappear. And there's also one other thing here is that it depends on how the grooves on the record is pressed. Because if they are pressed in a way that maybe we also will have that, that your stylus that you're using, uh, like maybe a Shibato or an, or an elliptical or something like that, a nude stylus, well, that, that goes longer down the grooves, that, that will actually help. To avoid this inner groove distortion from happening. Maybe it will not be eliminated. But it will be less. Compared to maybe a conical. This is also has to do with how the grooves is pressed. So that is all I have to say from this time. So thank you very much for watching again. And don't forget to thumbs up if you like the video. And please subscribe.